one of the one of the things that I'm uh, kind of curious about is um, uh, last year we had a very successful run, both in the World Club Championships and here domestically. How do you feel it's going to be different from last year? It's probably a good question, Anthony. First up, um, I think we chatted about it earlier. Uh, I think there's going to be a flow-on effect from Pierre initially, and. Uh, you know, week to week, I think uh, Terry will stamp his authority, stamp his mark on the team and the way he wants to play. Um, we've seen so far pre-season, it's been a uh, pretty uh, free type of game from us. It's, Terry's sort of given us a little bit of freedom, which is probably the biggest difference so far from last season. Um, but I think week to week, you know, Terry will just stamp his authority and stamp his mark because... Uh, you know, he's come here with his own ideas and, uh, and uh, you know, I'm sure he's, uh, he's played a different style in Motherwell to what he might play here, which is hopefully a really free attacking style of game. Yeah, which is something that, you know, one of the things I noticed last year was that we that started to develop towards the end of the year, especially much more we have more of a, I felt we had more of a European game going. Um, in terms of... Um, I just wanted to ask you about, congratulations by the way, on playing for Australia against Kuwait the other night and Australia being the first team to uh, qualify for the Asian Cup. Uh, how was that experience for you? Great experience, loved it. Loved it. every second. Um, went to camp with Arnie week beforehand, all the boys. You know, I didn't know a lot of the boys, um, but uh, we sort of got together really quickly and started enjoying ourselves really quickly. Had quite a few uh, sessions on the park, a lot of intensity, a lot of shape, the way Arnie wanted us to play. And it all came together really quickly. We had three days of training. And I think uh, people... How difficult is that? How difficult is it to kind of uh, take a group of players that haven't played together before and gel them in such a short time? It is difficult. Um, everyone's playing different styles at their individual clubs, so it's very difficult. But uh, the boys who's got in, obviously, are, are good players and they can adapt. So. So I think we did that. Probably. Do you think that's the key, adjustability, uh, 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 the ability to adapt uh, to a system that you're not used to playing? Definitely at, definitely at an international level. Um, I think they've gone down the right track having a, squad of, a big squad of 40 players or so. Now with the Asian, the Asian League and all that, uh, you just need a lot more players um, to fill in whenever the games are and people aren't available and all that sort of thing. So definitely adaptability, adaptability to different systems, adaptability to different positions within the team. So, How, how important do you feel like the, you know, our move into the Asian, Asian market is? I think it was the biggest, our biggest step in the last year, even, even looking at us and the World Cup and all that sort of thing. I think us going to Asia was the biggest, well, down the track years to come will be the biggest step so far. I want to ask you a couple of, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, goalkeeping related questions. Uh, uh, is that where you started? No, I was uh, a uh, striker, an endeavouring striker up there, scoring hat tricks every week. So many goalkeepers I know. That's really what, that's they, what, start, to, what they really want to do. Somehow we get Still. stuck back there. Man. <laughs> how does it happen? And, and, and so, how did you make the transition from striker to goalkeeper? Ah, oh, it's just one of those situations where no one else is going goals. No one was foolish enough to go on goals. That's how it used to be. It used to be the last guy standing, you're a goal. That's it. So I just started taking a half with another guy. Got picked for a representative team and just kept going from there. At what, at what point in your life did you, did you think, oh, actually, I could really kind of turn this into a career? Was there a specific moment or a specific point yeah. where, where it occurred to you that this actually would be uh, uh, how you would make your living? Yeah, when I got the phone call from uh, Ron Smith, Institute of Sport. Ah. Yeah, when I was 15. Yeah, got the call from him. Come on down to Canberra. Two seasons, two years. Best two years of my life as a junior. Um, just learnt so much. Learnt so much from Ron. Learnt so much from Steve O'Connor, Tom Samani, Paul Jones, keeper coach there. And just the facilities were just first class. So this was just a total professional setup. Um, it's the sort of setup you get in Europe and these type of places. So that was it. Just got the taste for it there. It's and, very uh, important for for young, not just keepers, but young players to have that kind of resource available to them. I think, especially if you're looking to make it your career. You know, you, you but at the time, at that time you came into it was. Wh wh I was. It was 90, 
92. 92. And I forget what, what, what condition the National League was in at that point. Not so great. It's never been so great, really, has no, it? No. No. no it's but, uh, not from the beginning, actually. Just plugged away, didn't it? And what, what was the uh, what was the first what was your first full uh, first team game? Um, Twenty months into the Institute of Sport, got the call from Brisbane Brisbane Strikers. Right. Went up there. Was fortunate enough. I was 18 at the time. Fortunate enough to just go straight into the first team. Wow. And haven't looked back. I've. Uh, and you've been playing first team football ever since. First team football ever since, and uh, it was it was a lucky situation. The other keeper. Got injured just before the first game, sort of we were vying for the first spot, but the other guy got injured, so I was just thrust straight in there and never looked back. And that's the key, I think, uh, you know, when you're, especially when you're a keeper, because you've usually got, you know, at least two guys breathing down your neck for your spot, yeah. is being ready for the opportunity when it comes up. Yeah, there's only one spot. Isn't that's there? it. And one so, place. And so when that opportunity comes up, you have to make it yours. Definitely. Immediately. Yeah. So and that's what I did. I was lucky, really lucky. Yeah. And uh, there's been many years where I just I haven't felt that pressure, and probably this season I've just really started feeling it again with Justin Passfield. He's young Josie, yeah. He's really stepped up and uh, yeah. playing, uh, training really well. So in the American Express campaign that I did, when they asked me what my what my childhood ambition was, it was to play in Syria. Um, what was yours? Childhood ambition. Uh, how young are we talking? Uh, well, I think it was about uh, when I first had that thought. I was probably about 12. Yeah, when I was 12, I was thinking about my next fishing trip. To be honest, with my old man. But uh, football-wise, I never really thought about a career at that age. It just it only happened when I was about 15. Right. When I went to the institute. But you know, I was brought up in Bundaberg, and it's a little country town, and you don't really see a lot. Outside, you're sort of sheltered from a lot of things. So, but uh, once I got a taste from it, I wanted to take it as far as I can, and I still do more so than ever. I really haven't pushed to go overseas, but now more so than ever, I really want to and, and go my, for it. In, in my opinion, you could do it in a heartbeat. Mate, you're too kind. No, I absolutely mean it. Yeah, Thanks cool. for your time. I really Thanks, Thanks, It's a pleasure. Thank you.